Alrighty guys, uh, NFL recap video. We're going to update the whiteboard behind us with the progress report. Usual stuff. If you're new here every single week for college and NFL, um, I come on here. We go over the picks we gave out for the prior weekend. We update the whiteboard. Uh, we update our track record for the year. Stay up to date. Stay transparent. And um, we look over the whole slate, right? So I'm going to pull up. Uh, the whole NFL slate. We're gonna go through the games, and um, it's kind of just like a, a, a first, uh, a first like step, a first layer of the process before we boil everything down to our official picks. Um, and then a video will be out with my official plays. Those are would actually count on the whiteboard. So everything I suggest today, everything that sticks out, the games that I circle, what I say I like on here um, is not a go. Okay, it's just kind of like a, ooh, that looks good. Let's research and look into that further type of a thing. Um, friendly reminder, we are sitting at 21 and 12 for college and 12 and 9 uh, for NFL so far this year. So, um, yeah, doing, doing, doing okay. I'd like to get this thing over 70%. Uh, make sure you guys do subscribe to the channel. I can't even remember if I said that. Last week... Last week, what the fuck? Kind of annoying. Uh, the Saints, really? What, what? Really? And I didn't even think Derek Carr was playing. That's pathetic. I think the Bucks are not that good. I think that, what Saints, what are you doing? Their coaching staff concerns me because based on their roster, uh, they should not be losing a game like that. And the Saints really hurt us. It was a two-unit play, and we had the Saints-Bills in a money line parlay. Both of those are two units. Um, if the Saints did win this past weekend, it would have been another huge week for us. But instead, it was a down week. It was a down week. We had another up week in, in, in college, really crushing college, over 65% um, on college football. So a little bit more dialed than a college. But this, this NFL slate is the best looking week I've seen yet I'm gonna have a ton of official plays not just like six or seven like I'm gonna have a pile of them I might pick every fucking game so um we went three three and four and we lost three and a half units guys um wow the Saints if the Saints came through we would have been five and five and two we would have been five and two and we would have been up I don't even know a, a stupid amount, like a bunch of units. So the Saints was the difference uh, this past weekend, and I guess that's a good lesson. Um, you don't want to have one single team intertwined and too much, um, too much of your of your money, right? Because if they don't get the job done, it's really hard to come out on the positive. So uh, a little bit too much faith in that Saints team. But let's update the whiteboard, and uh, we'll take a look at the slate, and we'll start getting into these games for the upcoming weekend. All right, so now combined um, officially through another week here, we're 36 and 25 now, up 15 units combined on, on college and NFL. So yeah, that, that, that really sucks. Um, that's significantly better than just about every other show here on YouTube. Uh, the Bet US guys are absolutely pathetic. There's a guy on there, some nerd. Um, and, and look, I don't like to call people out, but I just have to because. They get a lot of views, and it's it's screwing over a lot of people. I come on here. Um, I don't have a website currently. I don't ask you guys for subscriptions for my picks. I, I like to see people win, right? And I'm just trying to give out winners. That's what I like to do on this channel. And there's these other channels that get lots of views, and you know they have more subscribers than I do, and they absolutely suck. There's this nerdy guy over on the BetUS NFL uh, show and he's just atrocious. He knows absolutely nothing. He talks like he knows all these statistics and oh well, my model says this and in this situation, going for two makes no sense and blah blah blah. He just talks like a complete nerd. His record on NFL this year is five and fourteen, and he goes on this show every single week and he convinces people because he's a decent salesman. And he's just kind of a I don't know. I don't fuck with him, and uh, he's just got this weird kind of vibe to him, and he's selling these picks, and he's making it sound good, 
and I feel bad because I think people on those shows that watch those shows and, and take it uh, more seriously than they should, they're moving forward with what these guys say over there, and uh, their record sucks. 5-14, and 14, you know, that guy's costing people some serious money with his nerdy, stupid statistics. I mean, a lot of people ask, like, how do you get good in this industry? Um, it's not necessarily just being able to read statistics and look at trends. You just gotta, you either fucking have it or you don't fucking have it. If you're just a nerd and you never were an athlete and, and, you, and you don't just have a, a, a good gut feeling about sports, you just don't get it, then it's just not for you. It's just not gonna work. You, you have to just have it. You either have it or you fucking don't have it. That's all I gotta say. Um, this is Dan's rants for a reason. Sometimes I go absolutely, absolutely nuts, so... Sorry, uh, let's look at the fucking games. Fuck, fuck the channels that give out losing picks and cost people money. That's all I'm saying. And you know what? We had a losing week, three and four. We're down a few units, but we're still killing it for the year. Killing it on like a a, a well-known, like this, this much of a percentage gained is like really good. Uh, the kind of overall consensus, if you hit like 55, 56% of your bets... You're considered a really good sports better. Like, that's awesome. You consistently hit, like, 50, maybe even upwards of 60. Like, you're world class. Yeah, I I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. Let's get to the games. Like I said, I really like this slate. Drop a like on the video, too. Um, that'll help this get to more people. And maybe those people can make the money back they lost by listening to nerdy guys read stupid trends and statistics that don't even apply to this week's games fucking idiots i swear bro dumb people are dumb as fuck easily manipulated just read the news wrong morons man we are winning on this channel we're gonna continue it it's gonna be a big weekend it's gonna be a big one thursday night game bears in washington no interest with that one i know you guys usually like thursday night football um it's hard to wait all the way till saturday right you just want to you want to bet on football right as soon as it comes back around mid mid to late in the week um it's hard not to at least put like a little bit of beer money on the game right but i, I can't touch that i can't touch that i'm not, i hate to go once a team really starts stacking up the losses i hate to go against it because you just don't want to pick that one week where they finally get a win um Commanders off a tough emotional loss. I know they're at home. I know they look pretty good against Philly, but I can't touch this game. I just can't do it. Jags and Bills, that that again is an absolute no-go. Bills off a huge emotional win. I gave out the Bills last week. Easy cash. I'm not going to be running back to him here. Uh, Jacksonville has already been overseas. Bills have to travel. Weird spot. I could see an upset. I, I'm not. It's not out of the question. Um, I'm not touching that game. I, I refuse to bet on any game that's played overseas. Just not something I'm interested in. Texans Falcons. There's one I like. Texans plus two going to Atlanta. Give me Houston. I think this one's going to make my official plays. Give me Texas. I like the vibes over there. At the end of the day, I don't care how bad a roster is or, man, that team is bad. Like, it's still a full roster of athletes that were good enough to make it to the NFL, which means they're world-class athletes, some of the best in the world, even if it's the worst team in the NFL, like even the Bears. Go to their locker room one day and look at all the people in the Bears locker room. All those people are extremely strong, fit, athletic, unbelievable world-class athletes. I think a lot of it is is coaching staff and all, overall vibes and effort, and I, I like where the Texas— uh, I like where the Texans' heads are at right now. They play as a team, and that's good enough for me. Uh, I'll probably be going Texas on the money line. Um, we'll see. I'll have the official picks video out this week. Carolina is plus 9.5 at Detroit. Man, I mean, Detroit's going to get the win here. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. In what could be a low-scoring game. Low scoring, like for the Lions, low scoring. Maybe both teams in the mid to upper 20s. Ah, man. Nine and a half. I'm probably going to pass on that for now. I'll put a little star next to that game. Maybe we'll come back around to it. Tennessee. Ooh, Tennessee is now minus one at the Colts. I do 
think I briefly saw this game earlier in the week, and I thought the Tennessee Titans were an underdog. Do I have that somewhere? Yeah, plus one and a half. I did write it down. And the Texans were plus two and a half, and Carolina was plus eight and a half. I wrote some of these down the other night. Um, I was out of town this week, and that's why uh, this particular video is out here on a Wednesday night. These usually come out on Monday night, right? The college recap video is usually a Sunday video. Uh, this NFL uh, weekly recap video and, and look ahead to the line, uh, the, op the opening lines, usually much earlier in the week. I was out of, out of town, so everything's kind of delayed this week. Uh, so forgive me for that, but I did kind of write stuff down as it came out. I like to know what it, what it comes out at. And uh, Tennessee has gone past the zero mark. They're now a favorite, and that's the side I was hoping for. Um, I have I have them circled. I had them circled at plus one and a half, and now they're minus one. I think we should grab that uh, before it goes any further. And, and I'm not going to mess with the point there. It'll just be Tennessee on the money line uh, in this spot. I think that'll probably make the official plays, but you guys will have to wait for that video to see if that really comes through. I still got to research that game. If there's a couple things I find that are red flags, it's not going to make the picks. Ravens are favored by Fort Pitt. See, this is a game where it's like the experts will tell you historically over 50 fucking thousand years, these games are always close. So I'll take the points at home with Pittsburgh. I don't know, man. I mean, this Pittsburgh team is not good. I gave you guys the Texans. Over Pittsburgh is an official pick. Are they going to stay within four? I mean, the Ravens just beat the Browns, and I know the Browns didn't have Deshaun Watson, but I probably am going to circle the Ravens for now. I think, man, I it's hard to believe that Pittsburgh's going to drop another game at home. I mean, it's just been it's been kind of a sh a shocking year for the home games for Pitt, but the team's just not that good. Uh, I'll probably just pass on that game though. Saints, the team that fucked us, one point favorite at New England. That's 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 gonna be a battle of like who really doesn't want to be embarrassed because obviously everyone's down on the Patriots right now. Um, the things being said about Bill Belichick and Saints off just a disgusting effort against the Bucks. I mean, Saints are the better team, but. We've seen we've seen New England at least be competitive here at home against a couple of teams. That could be a that could be kind of a sneaky game. I'm just gonna start. I'm not even gonna circle aside for now. Uh, maybe look at the under in that game, as uh, New England's offense is 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 definitely gonna struggle against New Orleans defense and uh, Saints offense. Just man, even with Kamara back, I just subpar, subpar, and it is a low number at forty. But that's probably for a reason. I think under 40 is, is a good play. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to probably take under 40 Saints-Patriots game. Bengals-Arizona. Cincy minus three at Arizona. I mean, Arizona plus three sounds good. <laughs> we took the – I gave you guys the Titans as an official pick over Cincy. I'm probably going to give you Arizona uh, over Cincy. And I was on Cincy in that Rams game. I took him. I took him that night. So I'm not a hater, but it's just the spot. Philly. See, this is a game I really like. Philly minus four and a half at the Rams. People are really high on the Rams. I think Cooper Cup is back. Everyone's so down on the Eagles. Man, this Eagles team, they just can't figure it out this year. All these nerds, all these geeks, these these losers. My model says this, like losers, straight losers are all over the Rams. And, and nothing's a guarantee in sports betting. I can come on here and give a strong opinion. It doesn't mean I'm right, okay? And sometimes if you're too emotional about a certain game, probably shouldn't bet on it. But this is the spot where the whole world is down on Philly. People think the Rams are like pretty good this year. I think the Rams are bad this year. Um, I think the game where they were competitive against the 49ers, the 49ers just kind of sleepwalked their way to a win, okay? At the end of the day, this is the NFL. This is not college. You don't have to win by a high margin to try to impress the committee to be in the top four teams and make the college football playoff. It's irrelevant. A win is a win. If it goes in the win column, great. It doesn't matter if it's an ugly game. Philly's been kind of doing the same thing. They've just been kind of doing what they need to do to win. Now it's a road game. I think they show up big here. I'm liking Philly. I think the world's finally going to be against Philly here uh, after almost blowing the game to the Redskins. Probably should have lost. 
and um, <laughs> Redskins. Yeah, we're going to stick with that, Redskins. Um, commanders. Uh, Philly, you know what? I like Philly here. I just think, they're, I think they get up for certain games and they just sleepwalk their way to victory in others. Um, I gave out Philadelphia at the Bucks earlier in the season. People thought I was crazy for that one. Everyone's calling for an upset. I'm like, you people are nuts. Four and a half? We only have to lay four and a half with the Eagles. Give me Philly. Give me Philly. Kansas City Chiefs minus four against the Vikes. Do I want the four points? Probably not. Upset pick Vikings? Probably. We'll see in the official picks video. Jets Broncos. Here's another game. I, I love this one. Is this my favorite game of the week? It's fucking damn close. Everybody. Everybody is on the Jets. I mean, <laughs> I mean, talk about a public underdog. I think the entire universe is on the New York Jets. You people are nuts. That game was rigged and Taylor Swift and all this crap surrounding the Chiefs. Did you watch the first part of the game? It was about to be a huge blowout. And then the NFL said, all right, well, we can't have people change the channel. We can't have a blowout tonight. Like, Chiefs, can you just fall asleep and let the Jets get back in the game? We'll, we'll let you win at the end. That's exactly what happened. They wanted to retain viewership in a primetime spot. Uh, Kansas City could absolutely dog walk the Jets if they wanted to. They just knew they didn't care. Um, and I, I do think there's some stuff going on behind the scenes that's that's really interesting. Uh, this is a huge billion-dollar industry. It is not out of the question that there's strings being pulled in these games. And um, in this spot, everyone's like, wow, you know what? Zach Wilson, he's coming around. The Jets really showed you something. Denver, they're horrible. Blah, 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 blah. Denver, give me Denver. You think Denver is going to want to lose to the Jets and be completely embarrassed? Absolutely not. And it's a blessing that this number's down to one and a half. Money line at 130. That's probably the move. Take the point and a half out of it. Denver on the money line. I hope this continues to move. I would love to even see it flip to the Jets being a favorite so I can get plus money on Denver here. Um, this is just one of those games where my model says the Jets have a chance from these geeks that are not even 500 on their picks. Like, no, you got to just understand football. Denver's winning this game. You people are like batshit crazy on the internet. It's nuts. And people still watch. I can't, I can't believe after four or five weeks of football, channels that don't even give out five, that aren't even profitable, that are like winning at a 30, 40% rate still retain viewership. It's beyond out of control. It's like you guys keep going back and listening to people that give you losing picks every single week. It's fucking bananas. Crazy, crazy. Cowboys, Niners, probably just watch it, right? Do we have to get involved? I think I'd lean Dallas in the points here, but Dak, Dak Prescott, actually with pressure on him, this dude can absolutely fold like no other. I mean, he can absolutely throw three interceptions in this game. Strip sack, holds the ball way too long, doesn't go through his reads good enough. It is in San Fran. It is a big game. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I said I'd lean Dallas in the points. I don't know. If they had a, I like their, I, I do think roster for roster, I do like, I do like Dallas to, to be really, really close here. But the quarterback situation scares me so bad. I, I just don't. Dak Prescott, his statistics get so padded by the blowout games. Have you guys noticed that? When they have a good game, when the Cowboys are, you know, firing on all cylinders, they run up the score. His numbers look great. And when you look at like a 10 game stretch of his statistics, he looks good overall. But it's just because they they win in huge blowouts, and he just stacks up the you know the good statistics. If there's pressure on this guy, he's a bottom seven quarterback in the NFL. Dak Prescott sucks. He'll never win a big game. I just don't like him in big spots. This is a big one. Sunday night football. Maybe he finally shows us something. I just can't do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on that one. I'm not even writing it down. Green Bay and the Raiders. I'll have to check the injury report for Green Bay. That'll determine our pick on this. Jair Alexander. Jones. A um, couple O-linemen for the Pack. If the Packers have a significant Campbell, I think an outside backer. Um, if the Packers have enough guys back, I like them here. 
It'll also matter the quarterback situation for the Raiders. I like O'Connell. I gave out the Raiders as an upset pick over the Chargers. Um, Packers are better at home. I don't know, man. That's just another weird game, too. And that's Monday Night Football, and that's the last game of the slate. Probably going to pass on that. Right now, I think I like Philly the best. I kind of like Arizona over Cincy. Kind of like the under in the New England game. Yeah, there's some good stuff here. After I do some final research and boil this down, I think we're going to have our first undefeated week in NFL, guys. Hit that subscribe button. Drop a like on today's video before you exit out. and Let me know in the comments below what games do you like? Which of these things that I just circled do you disagree with? I would love to know. It's totally fine on this channel. Voice your opinion, please. I got thick skin. I can take it. And uh, that's fun, right? Debating. If we all agreed on stuff, how boring would that be? Nonsense. See you in the next video.